welcome everyone who's here and those who are watching online. Um, thank you for joining us for the last two early morning prayers before the end of the fast, which takes the end of our fast is really on Saturday, unless you choose to continue this thing going. If so, God bless you. And uh, But we are going to have um, prayer this morning, and we're going to continue to lift John Hatfield up in prayer. And he is still in ICU, correct? He's still in his ICU, uh, but he is obviously out of the surgery and um, just we're going to continue to pray that the Lord touches him, heals him, gets him out of the hospital as soon as possible. Um, but we're going to pray for him. And um, the number of other people joining us online, so I just want to welcome Timothy Cush, and good to see you, brother, and uh, Laura Huff. We've got my mom, who's faithful with us every morning, and my sister, Debbie, who's faithful with us every morning. So, uh, roll call, good to see that you're in attendance this morning. And <laughs> Teddy Cox Thompson, Debbie Gorton, um, and Deb Fraley. Nice to have you with us, Deb. So thank you all for joining us online, and it's good to have you with us. We're going to start out this morning just opening it up in prayer and then going into this morning. We're on chapter 13, 21 seconds to change your world. And I'll just encourage you to join in with us. And after tomorrow, on Tuesday night, we're going to continue this book um, on our Tuesday night prayer and Bible study so that you don't think that you're missing out on anything. And, uh, but we did not complete it in this part, but we will keep it going. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you that we can come um, to you with our requests, with our needs, but also, Lord, we can come to you with our, with our praise. And so, Lord, thank you for being with us. We thank you for the protection that you give us. We thank you for your presence within us. And, Lord, we thank you for your touch. So, Lord, I thank you that we can gather together. Um, each one who's here and those who are watching online, we are one in spirit. And so, Lord, I pray as Jesus prayed to the Father, may we be one just as you and Jesus are one. And so, Lord, may we have unity and may your hand of blessing be upon us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In chapter 13, it says, How very like David the king this statement is, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So that's from Psalm 23. And David knew all about enemies. His whole life was surrounded by enemies. Uh, the ravenous beasts who wanted his sheep were the enemies of his childhood. It says, and what a childhood it was after lions and after bears. And then came Goliath, then Saul, then the Philistines, then the Ammonites, then the Hittites, then the Jebusites, the palace plotters, one of his own sons, and finally old age. When David wrote of enemies, he knew whereof he spoke. He lived his life in the presence of enemies. It is no wonder then that he speaks of God's loving providence in the midst, not in the absence of, but in the midst of his enemies. David never said that God would give me a life without enemies. He did say that God has not forsaken me when gossipers and detractors and envious plotters are circling me like hungry wolves. And in university, as a university president and as a businessman, I frequently needed cash flow projections from my chief financial officer. In order to understand those projections, I had to know the assumptions they were based on. So likewise, the Lord's Prayer and Psalm 23 are based on certain sets of assumptions. And so here are the seven assumptions from the Lord's Prayer. Number one, there is a God, and he is our heavenly father. Number two, he is worthy to be praised. Number three, he is our king, and he has a will for our lives now, not just later in heaven. Number four, we must eat to live, and we can trust him to eat. Number five, we have all sinned, and we need forgiveness. Number six, we must forgive to be forgiven. And number seven, we will face temptation and evil. 
So here are the seven assumptions from Psalm 23. Number one, the Lord is good and caring shepherd. He's a provider, even as I need, as, even as I am a needy sheep. Number two, I have needs in my body, such as food and water. Number three, my soul also has needs, such as restoration. Number four, I live in confusing world and I need guidance. How many can say amen to that? Number five, I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The psalmist assumes that that is a matter of when, not if. Not if I walk through a valley of shadow of death, but you will, and it's a matter of when. Number six, there will be times that I need comfort, and there's times where I need um, protection. And number seven, I will, once again, not might, I will have enemies. This last assumption is probably the most painful to learn. When I was young, I believe that many, uh, many young folks feel this way. I thought that if I was a nice person, I would not have enemies. Now I see that nothing you can do to keep someone else from deciding that you are their enemy. You may have indeed, you may indeed make enemies with your own actions, but you are likely to have enemies regardless of how nice or how good or how generous or anything that you are. It's so hard for those who desire to be no one's enemy to realize that they themselves have enemies not of their own making. On the other hand, it is a joy to realize that though I may be absolutely surrounded by enemies, I'm not abandoned. Even in their mocking presence, I am loved, I am guarded, I am provided for by my father and shepherd. The story of Hadash, Hadassah or Esther is perhaps the prime example in the Bible of the truth about hidden enemies. The young queen Esther is certainly to be admired but the real heroic figure in the story is Mordecai. Without Mordecai, there's no story of Esther. Indeed, without Mordecai, the slaughter of the Jews would have been, unimaginable, been an unimaginable horror. Mordecai's story is also a prime example of God's blessing in the presence of enemies. In that story, told in the book of Esther, a man named Haman hates Mordecai, the Jew. And Haman is unreasonable, and envious and has envious hatred as, by the way, most anti-Semitic or unreasonable and fueled by envy. Haman wants to despoil Mordecai, take all he has, pull him down, and even kill him. And not just Haman, but every Jew in the kingdom. Mordecai has no such evil design on Haman. He does not harbor hatred for Haman, or he doesn't even want to kill him or covet Haman's position or possessions. Mordecai is a decent man, a faithful servant of the king, and a loyal citizen, yet Haman, Haman hates him bitterly. Is a dangerous naive, being naive to think that because you are a decent, God-fearing person who tries to be friendly and fair to everyone, you will have no enemies. Psalm 23 assumes the presence of enemies, not the absence of enemies. So just like Mordecai, you have enemies. And just like Haman, they feel justified, even righteous in their every attempt to bring you down. So Haman justified his efforts to de destroy Mordecai by wrapping it in the claim that it would be good for Xerxes and his kingdom. So you have enemies who assume your destruction might even be good for God and his kingdom. When my soul most needed restoration, I was shocked to discover that some did not want me healed, but instead wanted me strung up. As in the case of Haman and Mordecai, God will also care for them miraculous. He will also care for you miraculously. At one point, Mordecai, his arch enemy, Haman, must lead Mordecai through the streets of the capital, proclaiming, that's actually my favorite part of the story, <laughs> proclaiming the king's favor upon the, hatred, uh, the hated Jew. Finally, of course, Esther is used by God to foil the murderous plot, and Haman himself is hanged in, on the gallows that he built for Mordecai. We can rest in the knowledge that God will protect us and give us victory over those who hate us without cause. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, I might paraphrase this line from Psalm 23 in this way. 
He puts food on the table for me and makes my enemies stand around and watch while I eat. That puts a whimsical little touch of gloating on the verse. Not enough to be sinful, I think, but enough to be fun in the face of adversity. Yes, there are enemies around me, some of whom I I do not even realize are enemies. I will not worry that they are watching me. I will rejoice for them to see how extravagantly God takes care of me. And so that is a, that's a powerful chapter. And I think it's a, a good thing for all of us to realize that we will have enemies and we will, without a cause, you can't be standing for Jesus and standing for truth and righteousness and not have enemies. But put your trust in the Lord and your guidance be led by him and guided by him. Um, as we get ready to go to prayer now, I'm going to do the same thing I did yesterday. I'm going to read from Psalm 91. And uh, yesterday, we primarily said, hey, this is, this is for John Hatfield as we pray. Uh, this is our prayer of uh, God's hand on him. And I think it's really appropriate, but it's for Psalm 91, it's for any follower of Jesus Christ and the person that chooses to dwell in the shadow of the most high. And so I encourage you uh, to pray this over yourself, over your family, um, over those that you care about. Pray Psalm 91. And then, of course, we're going to go to the Lord's Prayer. We're going to pray over that and then the 23rd Psalm. So, in Psalm 91, it reads like this. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So, I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge, he is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely, he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. So if you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will trample upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample upon the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him, and with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That is a verse that you can hold on to as you trust in the Lord and rely on him. That's a verse that you can claim, and you can claim the promises of protection found in that verse. So now we'll go to the Lord's Prayer. We can pray this together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. My soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
can say amen to that as well. That is God's word to you, God's protection for you. Um, I'm going to just open this time of, of prayer with you. And um, then right after that, we'll go to our time of praying over the cards or any needs that you have or however you want to walk through the room or sit where you are. We'll go to that and then we'll come back together at, uh, at 650. And so I encourage you to just take time seeking the Lord during this time or praying for others. But during the first song, once again, um, I really, the song, The House of Miracles yesterday just hit home with me. And so um, I'm going to start out our time of, of prayer with that. And it says, this is a house of miracle. And I made the connection yesterday just saying, hey, if we have decided that this house, that our house is going to be a house of prayer, then inevitably that means that this is a house of miracles. And uh, that song goes, come alive in the name of Jesus. And it's a declaration that, that you can proclaim as you sing it. Just come alive, come alive to all that God has for you and his blessing, his provision, his safety, his protection for you and come alive to the purpose that he has for, for your life. Um, but let's pray. Lord, this time is your time. Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts and speak to our lives. Lord, that you would minister to us, but Lord, that also in this time of prayer, God, that we would minister to you. As we declare, as we say who you are, as we speak your blessings, and Lord, as we declare that you're our provider, but you're our source, you're our healer, you're our hope, you're the great I am. You're all-knowing, you're all-powerful, you're always present with us. You're never going to leave us or forsake us. And so, Lord, we thank you, and we bless you. And Lord, I pray that this time, that we would have a greater revelation of who you are and your care for us and your love for us, and Lord, our eyes would be open to that. Lord, for each and every one of these prayer requests that are listed here, we pray for your presence to be upon the lives that those requests come from, Lord. And that most importantly, God, not just that their prayer is answered, but that your presence is found. And so, Lord, we pray healing, we pray victory, we pray deliverance, most importantly, Lord, we pray salvation. So where there's cards listed with people that are far from you, Lord, we pray that each, over each and every one of them that they would encounter a Savior. A Savior who saves them from disease, a Savior that saves them from pestilence, a Savior that saves them from illness and sickness and, and brokenness, and a Savior who saves them from, from hopelessness. And brings hope into their lives and a savior who saves them of our, all of us, saves us of ourselves. I said, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done this day in our lives, in our church, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So you can join me in, in prayer time and, and we'll join back together in a closing at 10 minutes before the hour. This is a house of worship This is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name This is a house of are full of faith. You have our full attention. You have the final say. So come alive in the name of Jesus.
days may be darkest, but your light is greater. You light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, you're rising higher with power to save, with power to save.
Anybody need a miracle tonight? If you need a miracle, just raise your hand. Faith is high. Faith is high for you tonight.
right, it is 10 minutes before the hour. We're going to close out together. So I encourage you just to come together and, and return your cards. But remember those cards that you prayed for throughout the rest of the day. Um, there's two prayers that I want to focus on from our Pray First books. Um, one is a, a pride prayer. And the other one is going to be the generational bondage prayer. I'm going to pray that again. And then we're going to go back to the the weapons of our warfare. And I thought that is really appropriate for everything we're going through right now. But um, if you would just agree with me as I pray through this. And this is a a prayer that's simply called the pride prayer. It says, Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know pride is an abomination to you. So because of that, I renounce anything that would cause me to have pride in my heart in dealing with other people. And I renounce it and I turn away from them and I humble myself before you and I come to you as a little child, Lord. So I humble myself, rid myself of all pride and turn to you. So Lord, I pray that over each person in this church. And Lord, that we would have humble hearts before you. And Lord, over the prayer of the uh, generational bondages, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We renounce, we turn, we break, and we loose ourselves from all bondages. Bondages of, of physical and mental illness, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We loose ourselves from that. And Lord, from any bondages from that have come down the family line to us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Either bondages from ourselves, generational bondages that are done by family members in the past, Lord. And Lord, we loose ourselves from that. And Lord, we experience the freedom that is found in Christ. And Lord, we trust you with our lives. And so, Lord, we free ourselves from bondages and we receive the freedom that you have. So from Parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, any ancestors, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we cut off the curse and we receive your blessing. So, Lord, we thank you for setting us free. Lord, we thank you for the freedom that is in your name. And uh, one of the prayer requests that you'll see as you um, pick up the cards will be uh, Roberta Garrison. And uh, she just received a, a very good report as, she, as far as... Um, cancer that she's praying over and um the report is it is it cancer free her her counts have come down a lot of chemo so our prayer is the count continues to drop right what's that Total restoration. Amen. I agree with that. So, Lord, we pray for Roberta Garrison, and we thank you for the good sign. We thank you for the good indicators um, that her number, her count has come down. And, Lord, we agree with that. Total restoration in the name of Jesus. Total healing from her head to her toes. And, Lord, may that continue to be the praise report on her lips and on her doctor's lips. And, Lord, that she is totally in remission, totally healed, totally set free in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray that also over John Hatfield, Lord, that he will have a good report from the doctor. The doctor will be amazed at his turnaround. And Lord, that he will be released soon from the doctors. He'll be able to come home. But Lord, most importantly, I pray that that bleeding would stop, that they would, the medication would work, They'd discover the source of the bleeding and the bleeding would stop and he'd be totally well. And Lord, there'd be no worry. There'd be no fear in his mind or his heart. Or, and I pray your peace, your comfort to be upon Deanna and her family in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that, that she wouldn't be anxious. But Lord, you would rule her heart. The presence of your spirit would rule her heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And so Lord, we say from the weapons of our warfare, 
that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So we declare no weapon formed against me this day will prosper or any other day in Jesus' name. And the word of God says that trouble will not arise against us a second time. So we declare that Satan cannot take make trouble for me again in this manner as he did in the past in Jesus name and we declare all these prayers are accomplished and brought to pass by trusting in you through faith and expect an expectation in your name so Lord Jesus we confess all of our sins to you this day we cleanse ourselves and Lord over the body of Christ I pray cleansing I pray um, deliverance I pray freedom from ways of the past and even trusting in ourself Lord which is a form of pride. Lord, we free ourselves from that. And we turn to you. And Lord, we receive, Lord, may we show up as the body of Christ, as a church. May we be the bride without spot or wrinkle. Lord, may we be, may we be willing to cleanse ourselves from all sin, all contaminants, any ways of the past in which we've been drawn to the world which we have trusted in the ways of the world. Lord, I pray that we would turn wholeheartedly to you, have a passion and a desire for more of you, that each and every one of us would be filled with the Spirit and fall head over heels in love with you, Lord, and have no love, have no desire for the world and the ways of the world. So we confess to you all of our sins this day and every day past, and we repent, we renounce them those sins that are known and the sins that are unknown, those of omission, those of commission, and what we've done and what we have failed to do. So we lay down at your feet all the sins of the flesh, all the sins of the tongue and of the heart, and all, all, all unholy thoughts and actions. And thank you, Lord, for shedding your precious blood. It's your blood that cleanses us and makes us free. So we stand on your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And as we stand on your word, the enemy is driven out from before us, from above us, from around us, and from below us. We pray, Lord, your blessing over our homes, our workplace, our church, and all of the ministries that we have, Lord, from our children and our loved ones, from our works and our labors, from our land and our presence. And we declare that the enemy is not able to stand against us. And his works are taken captive and destroyed that no weapon formed against us will prosper. For the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against them. And we declare that all these things are accomplished by your word. So Jesus, our Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor and worship for your righteousness and holiness given to us by your word. So Lord, we thank you. And this day, Lord, May we walk in your promises. May we walk in your blessing. And Lord, show each and every one of us your favor. So Lord, bless this day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you all tomorrow. It's our final day of early morning prayer. So I encourage you to have a great day. And uh, be refreshed. <laughs>